Great. Welcome to the first of a series of short summaries. This one is on transformations and we're starting with reflection. Now, key to reflection, you need to state that it's a reflection, but you won't get any marks unless you say the equation of the mirror line. So if we look here, we've got the object A, and we're going to reflect it in the mirror line here, which is the x-axis. That's a very common one that they use. And you know that each corner or vertex of my object is the same distance away from the mirror line in my image. So this is my object, this is my image, and they're all the same distance away. So here, this corner is 2 to my mirror line, and the other side is 2 out. Here, I'm reflecting A in the line x equals minus 1. Anywhere along that line, x has a coordinate value of minus 1. And again, it's three steps across to the line, three steps out the other side. This is a bit trickier. It's a diagonal line they love to use in exams. y equals x. The y coordinate is always equal to the x coordinate. And you in the exam can turn your paper. Obviously, I can't do that with a board, so what I'm going to do is just make sure I have a diagonal line to my mirror line. It says my mirror line, not diagonal, a perpendicular or a 90 degree line. And I see here, I go across one and a half, so I come out the other side, one and a half, make a mark. Here, this is on the line, so it doesn't change, doesn't go anywhere. Here, this one, across 90 degrees to the line of a half, out the other side of a half, make a mark, and then obviously I'll join those together, and that is my reflection. So, that's a short summary of reflection. Next, we'll be looking at rotation, and get a bit more space for this one. Key to rotation is using your tracing paper. It's not given to you to rustle and really annoy the person sitting next to you, although you can if you want. Um, it's given to you to trace the shape. So what I'm going to do here is I'm tracing this shape and I'm trying to find out the rotation I need to get this shape onto this. And I need to tell the examiner this <coughs> rotation, the point of rotation, the number of degrees and whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise. So all I do is I get my shape and then I just put the pen on my tracing paper and I rotate until I can actually get my shape to rotate onto the other one. And it's a bit tricky to do here on the board, but this is the point I'm after here. I rotate it 90 degrees anti-clockwise and I get my rotation. So that's my original, my object, and this is my image. I'm rotating about the point one comma two. 90 degrees uh, anti-clockwise, okay? So 90 degrees anti-clockwise about point 0.1 comma 2. Similarly, I get this shape and I want to know the rotation to get it onto this shape. So I just trace it using my tracing paper, put my pen on various points to try and get it to rotate onto the other shape. And the point I'm after here is right in the corner, there, that rotates, that's 180 degrees, so it's a rotation about this point here, which is minus 2 comma minus 1, 180 degrees, and it doesn't matter about the direction, because it's the same if I do it clockwise or anti-clockwise. So, those are your key points for rotation. Let's move on to the next one, which is translation. Now, translation, you have to give a vector. Now, the vector is like a kind of vertical coordinate. You have the x at the top, the y at the bottom. The number at the top tells you how many are long. The number at the bottom tells you how many up or down. So, if this is my object and I want to translate it, or no translation to get to here, this image, I pick one point on my object and I see how many are long, one, two, three, four, so the, core, the vector will be four on the x, and how many on the y, so that's four along, and then two up, so that's four, two. 
here, if this is my object and this is my image, I'll actually choose this point, doesn't matter, as long as it's the same point on both, I'm going back one and down three. So to recognise the fact I'm going back, it's minus one. To recognise the fact I'm going down, it's minus three. Okay. Right, the final one we'll cover today is enlargement. Now, if you're lucky at foundation, they'll give you an object and say, enlarge that, scale factor two or three, and they, you don't have to worry about where you put it. You just put it on the grid anywhere. If we had to do that, ignore all the lines around it, that's one by one. If we did a scale factor of two, we multiply every length by two, so that's one along, it now becomes two along. It's one up, and now becomes two up, and it wouldn't matter where we put it. However, at higher, and sometimes at foundation, they will say, enlarge about a scale, a scale factor about the centre of enlargement. And you must give both of those if you're working backwards and saying what the enlargement is. Not just scale factor, but you must give that as well. So let's say we're enlarging this about this point A, scale factor 2. All I do is I see to each corner how much I travel. So I'm going along 2, my scale factor is 2, so I double it. So instead of going along 2, I go along 4. Make a mark. To get to here, I'm going along 2 and up 1. <coughs> scale factor is 2, so I will go along 4 and up 2. So I'm going along and up twice as much. And to get from here to here, I'm going along 3. So instead of going along 3 times 3 by 2, I go along 6, that gives me that point there. I join them up, and that's my image. Here, I want to enlarge this same shape about scale fact, about point B, scale factor, let's say 3. Okay? So what I'm now doing is I look and I go along one and down one to get to this point. Scale factor is 3, so I'm now going along 3, down 3. I get to here. To get to this point, I go along one, down two. So I want to go along three times as more and down three times as more. So instead of along one, down two, I go along one, down six. That will bring me to here. And similarly, along two, down two would be along six, down six to get to here, giving me that as my enlargement. If you're working backwards and you need to find out the point of enlargement, all you do is get your vertices or corners of your shape, draw lines back through them, and wherever they cross, that will give you your point. Thank you. <laughs>